Hello. So when you're in, the, in a relationship with a narcissist, we all hear so many wonderful things during those love bombing phases. So many things. And some uh, people are more eloquent than others and they might really lay it on thick and you just fall for it for so long because they're so good at it and they say such beautiful things to you. And it took me a long time to realize that things were lies. It took me a very long time because I thought it wasn't even occurring to me. It, it didn't even occur to me during the love bombing phase. That's, I guess, the point that concerns me so much because there could be other people out there getting love bombed and they're just on cloud nine thinking this guy is Prince Charming. They have no idea about narcissism because they haven't been crushed yet. So they didn't look anything up yet. Because that's what happened to me. I looked it up so I could deal with it. I educated myself and then I felt better. I was like, okay, it has nothing to do with me, blah, 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 blah. You know my story. But there are seven things that, and again, I love the number seven. I just do. So, and there are a million more. But great sounding things that they say that are actually really bad if you think about them. And some, some of them overlap. I'm not saying they don't. But I want you to understand that with the narcissist, no matter what they say to you, the bottom line is everything is about them. And the following seven things um, will reflect that. And I thought about them and I looked back. I looked back on texts and phone conversations. And um, I had written some things down that were said to me. When I say that, I don't have text conversations saved. But I had some written, things written down in a journal from text conversations that ended up being huge. Um, I, I should have seen them as bad. And I thought they were so beautiful. Number one, no one will love me like you do. Well, think about that. It sounds lovely. No one will love me like you do. They are concerned with how you love them how you love them. Number two is the same thing. I miss how you loved me. So you'll find when you break up and they're hoovering you, they'll refer to that a lot. They'll refer to that a lot. I miss so much how you loved me. Number one, no one will love me like you do. Number two, I miss how you loved me. They'll go back and forth. They both mean that they miss what you bestowed upon them. It has nothing to do with them missing your heart, your soul. It's not, instead of I miss how you laughed at stupid commercials or I whatever the case is, you know, people list genuine things they love about each other. It's not that. It's I missed how you loved me. Well, that doesn't compliment me. Now I'm educated and I know that means because that's all you care about is how I'm loving you. That's all you recognize is that no one will love you like I do because you're worried that you won't find someone like who loved you like that. You'll find supply. Okay, so one, two. Number three, I know you'll love me no matter what I do. I just know, I know you love me so much. I know you'll love me no matter what. I mean, I, I know you'll love me no matter what. That's dangerous. And that refers again to when I said, I taught him how he could treat me. I let him know what was acceptable because I tolerated it. And every time something happened and I tolerated it, he would escalate and do a worse action because they're pushing your line. They're pushing to see how much you will tolerate. So if I tolerated this, this, this actions one through 487, by now, we're on number three, I know you'll love me no matter what I'll do. The first time that was said to me, I thought that's nice. And the last time that was said to me, I thought, oh my God, I shot myself in the foot. I had shot myself in the foot by letting him think he could get away with all these things and that I'd love him anyway. Well, now we know different, yes? We know better, we do better, we hope anyway. If you're on the road to recovery and, and separating from them, if you're in it, just pay attention to these things and don't be complimented by them. 
Don't be complimented by one. No one will love me the way like you do. Number two, I miss how you love me. Number three, I know you'll love me no matter what I do. Don't be complimented by those things when they really have nothing to do with you, only to do with the narcissist. Any of those things he could say to any person that loves him well. None of these have anything specific in them, anything to do with me. And these are real things, by the way, that I've heard. Number four, you know how to treat me. Well, no kidding, I know how to treat somebody. I was raised properly. I know how to love somebody. I think so too, thank you very much. But again, it says nothing good about me or you if you're being told that. It says treat me. These are all me, me, me. If you notice, all seven of these are me, me, me for the narcissist. So you know how to treat me. And he might say, oh, I miss how you used to treat me. And eh. It's all connected, but it has nothing to do with us. It only has to do with them. Leads us to number five. Only you know what I need. No one else knows what I need. They might even be open and honest at this point, depending on how many hoovers and back and forths you have. They might have even been in another relationship and they're trying to get back with you and you know they were in another relationship, whatever. And if, oh, no, she couldn't do for me what you did. But that's supposed to make me feel better? That's supposed to make me feel better. Oh, okay. Excellent. Only I know how to treat you. Okay, you know how to treat me. Thanks. Thank you for that. A lot of good that does me. Great. Wonderful. Love it. Fantastic news. Doesn't do me any good. Number five. Only, oh wait, I already said that. Only you know what I need. I think I said that, right? Because four and five kind of go together. You know how to treat me. Only you know what I need. Number six. And this is a dangerous one because a lot of us can get sucked into this one. You are mine. Possession is never a good thing with love. Am I right? And it sounds so romantic. And it sounds so, you know, they, they want me for them and I'm theirs. It's, it's actually a trick that they say to make you feel wanted, encompassed by them, lured in by them. You know, we like to think of ourselves as being with one person. But I don't really think I'll ever want to be someone's possession or belong to someone. You are mine. Valentine's Day makes it sound very, very romantic. When a narcissist says it, it's a very dangerous sentence because if they really feel that way, and some of them get dangerous and they don't want you near anybody else. So it can be a huge red flag when you hear you are mine. And if you're with a normal person and they say that to you and they say it in a romantic way, I am not saying that that could be a negative sentence. When you hear it from a narcissist, they, there's malignancy behind it. You are mine. They don't want you to feel like you can go out and find anybody else. They don't want you to feel like you have the right to be with anybody else. It makes you feel like you're going to wait. I'm just going to wait. I'm his. I really am his. I'm just going to wait for him to come back. Hell no, you are mine. Number seven, you better not go with anybody else. Goes to number six. They say that to me, pardon me, to make you feel like you're that wanted, that they don't want you near anybody else. He'd go crazy. He'll go crazy if I'm with anybody else. You're his supply. Again, none of these things. It was never about you know, me the person, and if you think of the things that they say to you that you get swooned in by, do they have anything to do with you? Or is it basically all of those kinds of things that have only to do with them, 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 I, 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 me, me, me. So these are great romantic sounding things, and they may actually be romantic if they are with a normal, healthy, functioning individual, but with a narcissist, these are all red flags. And if you're in the beginning love bombing phases and you fell into these kinds of channels and videos, you may want to relook at, these are seven examples. There's a gazillion of them. You may want to relook at these examples as to being dysfunctional if you, if you think you're with a narcissist. Because they are. And they reek, they stink of 
how they think about their relationship with you. That it has nothing to do with us and it's all about them. It was just, just the classic narcissistic relationship. So I caution you, that's all. Keep your ears open regardless of what stage you're in. If they're trying to hoover you and use any of these, if you're in the love bombing and they use any of these, look at them with an open mind. See the context in which it's said to you. See your relationship at that point. And, and just keep your eyes and ears open. So we, we remain educated and not fall victim to something that's actually manipulation. I don't want anyone to be manipulated anymore ever again on the whole face of the earth ever. That's my goal. <laughs> it's kind of lofty, I know. Okay.